guys, today I'm here with Sheriff Mark Lamb of Pinal County. He's uh, been kind enough to take some time out of his busy schedule to sit down with me and answer a few questions, and uh, let's get to know him a little bit better. Mark, thank you for being here. Oh, thanks for coming in. I really appreciate you taking the time and, you know, hanging out for a little bit. That's my pleasure. Yeah, you've been a, a pillar of really good, great beliefs and great just philosophy, and you brought that forward into the department. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I know several of your officers, and I will tell you, I've asked them questions. I have grilled them, trying to get them to say, what could be better? Not a single one said anything. And that's good to hear, because that's really, truly who I want to serve. I want to serve the taxpayers, but I also want to make sure my employees yeah. want to come to work and enjoy doing their job. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the, the guys just do, do not hesitate to say, hey, Mark's got our back. We've got great equipment. We, oh, I did hear one, one, but I'll, we'll get into that later. Okay. <laughs> I'm anxious to find out. Soda machines? <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, one of your officers likes being up in uh, Gold Canyon, better than down here, but since there's yeah. not, a, not a lot of officers, you probably know who I'm talking yeah. about. Sorry, yeah. Sean. <laughs> you know, and honestly, we leave, because I'm a, f a guy that doesn't micromanage, yeah. I leave that up to the supervisors. Yeah, so we can pass the blame. I don't pass blame. I'm a leader. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so But we can say that, hey, you weren't aware of that. Situation. What we've done is we've empowered them to do their jobs, awesome. and that includes sergeants, empowering them to do a, to run their squads how they see well, fit. Well, that is fantastic. Yeah. And you know what? As uh, somebody who's been in management, and obviously not on this level, but uh, somebody who's been in management for a long time, you know, I understand. Yeah. Let my guys do what they need to do. Yeah. Hey, you know, some of the things that I know that you believe in, and I've got my cheat sheet here, uh, I believe that you follow the same mantra that I do, which is God, family, country, constitution. Yes, sir. How does that affect your daily life? Oh, it's everything. Honestly, it, it affects all my decisions I make. It gets me up in the morning. Um, you know, and what I mean by that is I think that every one of us need an anchor in our lives, Absolutely. especially if you're doing law enforcement, you need an anchor. And I think one of the best anchors for law enforcement is to have a good, good faith in God and Jesus Christ. And Amen. I think those help you make your decisions. So knowing that I'm making decisions with God in mind first, with what's best for my family as well. Yes. Unfortunately, when you serve in public, your family faces there's some sacrifices Absolutely. that go on there which i'm a believer that somebody has to do it yeah the founding fathers didn't sit and cry about it they did what they had to do and they went broke doing it and a lot of them suffered because yep. of it majority of them majority of them um and then i also believe that those things help me make decisions uh as it relates to my job but the biggest thing too is well one of the biggest three mm -hmm. is my love for country the constitution yeah. freedom i lump them all in together yeah I really, if I were to boil it down to one thing, it's freedom. America signifies freedom, and it has for so many generations. And then the Constitution is what, you know, really solidifies that. So, yeah, those are the three pillars for me. Now, you've been a pretty vocal supporter of Trump. I have been a very uh, huge supporter. We have, I, I myself am a supporter of Trump. Uh, we have a lot of opposition to that. Everybody thinks he's a racist, a homophobe. Uh, you, Funny you that people that are saying that are people that have never met him. Correct. Now, I've never met the man, but I can tell you just by his actions, what I've seen, how many people of color he's put into high positions, the unemployment level of minorities being lower than ever, all these things that he works for that go unnoticed by the mainstream media today, it's frustrating for me as a civilian. Yeah. We don't get the real answers. And it doesn't. it's not that it goes unnoticed by the mainstream media. It goes unreported Good point. or reported unfactually. Good point. Uh, majority of the people in this country, and you can listen to, if you go out and interview people on the street, the majority of the people that do not like Trump are a couple different reasons. One, um, they've just believed what the media has to say about him. <laughs> I've got family and it's unfair. Like I've been the victim of false, you know, accusations and different things. And, and it's frustrating because there's nothing you can do about it. We don't have any recourse. It's got to be extremely frustrating for him on a national level, dealing with the national media. They're selling a certain image of president Trump to people and people are buying it. Yeah. 
and that's that's sad. Yeah. The second, because they don't truly know them, they haven't done their homework. They don't go in and investigate and read books and look at old videos and really understand what he's done for the country and what he's done for other races to to where uh, for the minorities. I just don't understand how you can call him a racist. I've been around him multiple times. Yeah. I've been around racists. That man is not a racist. Here in Pinal County, we have some white supremacist groups. Across the country, you have people that are racist. And the racism is not just white to black or right. white to Hispanic. It is, it is entirely possible that another race can be racist towards, towards whites as well. well so we've racism seen that right exists. Now. We're seeing that right now. Yeah. And a lot of people think it's racism. It's it's education. differences in opinions. It's I think difference it's, it's education. It's education because you can go to another country where everybody's of one race yep. and people still kill each other. Yeah, and people still have problems. Tribal, tribal level. It, yes. And there's not a group of sixty odd million people that are always going to see eye to eye. And I think people just need to take a step back and say, hey, it's okay to be different. It's okay to think different. But let's get along. Let's That's agree right. to disagree. And look, I'm the, I'm a, I'm a very pro President Trump because I've seen the good things he's done, and he is somebody that supports law enforcement. He supports the rule of law. He supports the Constitution. Are there things that I don't agree with? Sure. Same here. Sure. I'm not a big government guy. So anytime you pass something that I think makes government bigger or doesn't reduce it, um, then yeah, I'm not always in agreement. But I think, but that's okay. And President Trump understands that. I am a leader. I understand it. I understand that my employees and the taxpayers aren't ag going to agree with every decision I make. Correct. I would just hope that they would give me the benefit of the doubt to know that I'm trying to do the best by my employees, my agency, the taxpayer, and the county. Absolutely. No particular order. Those are the four things that I, I try to take into consideration when I make a decision. Yeah. Why did you run for sheriff? You know, we talked a little bit briefly yep. before we got started. Yep. Um, I didn't like the, con the direction the country was going. It was under President Obama and his administration. I did not think that they embodied what this country was about. I think that they were straying away from the Constitution and, and slowly eroding away at our freedoms. Um, and, and look, I think that President Bush in many ways started a lot of that. And I agree. So there's, but there was a continue, a continuation of that. Yeah. And I was frustrated. And then the, the prospect of having Hillary Clinton come on as a president was even more alarming to me. And so I didn't want to be the guy that sat in the, on my couch and just complained or, or was a troll on media. I wanted to do something about it because I do love this country and I love freedom. And so I made a lot of sacrifices, a lot of changes. But my family and I knew what the end goal was, and we wanted to serve yeah. wherever we could. And I was fortunate enough to win the election. But it, it, this was born out of my love for this country and for freedom. That's why I decided to run for sheriff. That's why I put my money on the line. That's why I put my reputation on the line. Um, and that's why I continue to work very hard for the people of Pinal County and my employees so that we can create what America should be here in this county. Yeah, and I've talked to people that know you know you well. One one of them happens to be your best friend, and the one thing he could tell me, and this is for you guys, what you see is what you get with Mark. He's not going to put up some false image. He's not truly a politician, even though he's in a political environment. What Mark believes is the truth. What Mark says, from my, my understanding, is the truth. And for me, I've always told people, if you don't really want to hear the answer, don't ask the question. Because I get in trouble. I don't have a filter. Mark asked you. Yep. But, but I'm not very good at, not it, very either. Good at it either. <laughs> but I find it, I, I think it's, to run a gambit of deception is too hard. Mm. I'm not smart enough for that. Yeah. Like, I, I just... I find that America, so one of the things I talk to youth about, I have three things, but one of the first things that I talk to the youth about and other people is be authentic. We are hungry in this country for people that are just authentic, that just speak truth, that are, that are people of, of conviction for what they stand for. 
And I just find it easier to live life like that. So, so that's one thing that people will ask my, um, my chiefs and stuff. They're like, what's he really like? Yeah. And they like, look, what you see on, on live PD or what you see in any of these things, that's exactly how he is. And, and that is how I am. I just, it's easier just to be me. Well, it's a lot harder to remember who you told what lie to. Yeah. And that's something the politicians, I think today really forget. Uh, Kamala Harris ran as an Indian. Now she's black. It, it, and it's become a society of what's going to self-serve me better to allow me to move forward in my cause or my beliefs. And it's unfortunate to me that all, all of a sudden now with Trump's opposers, they're not talking about Biden's past. They're not talking about Kamala's past. I want to see a, a damn debate. I want to see him get up on stage. Oh, as do I. Because we I'll, all, pay, I'll, I'll, I'll order pay per view yeah, for that. I'll bring the camera and, <laughs> and, and the, the equipment. I want to see it. Now, I will tell you, uh, in my opinion, the Biden would be just destroyed. Let's let's take everything. He would be destroyed. First yeah. of all, let's take everything off the table. And let's just let's just focus on where we're at in this country right now. And yeah. we, to me, this is going to come down to whether you believe in the rule of law or not. Do you believe in protecting our communities, holding people accountable for actions? Um, do you believe in your police? That's really where we're at in this country. President Trump does. Yes. He's continually supported. He's not only said it, he's shown us by actions as well. Yeah. You have, an, on the other hand, you have people that uh, are not talking about pro-law enforcement. They're encouraged, in, in many ways, they're encouraging the behavior of destruction and, and that is tearing away at the fabric of this country. And so I think people have hard choices to make. And it, if you took all the other politics, not mind you, the speaking out of one side of the mouth and doing another, mm -hmm. um, in the end, it's going to come down to, do you want to protect this country and protect what we've known, what we've had for so long? Yeah. Or are you willing to, to let it go? And that's a tough choice that people are going to have to make. I hope that people will put aside their hate for the president. Because yep. there are people that are so blinded by hate that they can't see clearly right now. Absolutely. I think if people can look at the end product instead of who's getting it there and realize that President Trump cares about America first, this is a sovereign nation. People forget that. We have borders. People forget that. We need to protect those borders. Uh, you know, how, there's, what, 60 million illegal aliens in the United States? That's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. I don't and know that we really truly know the number. We don't know the number. I, I mean, I'm pulling that one. Or, but here's you know, what's six, funny is, is six, six to 12 million, I should say. These people want to change what America is, yet you, you got that Omar girl out in Minnesota. <laughs> oh she wants to, she came here as a refugee because she wanted to come to a country where you could experience freedom, yet she espouses doctrine that is counterintuitive to what she came for. Yeah. Same with those people that want to come here to make a better life here. Now we're trying to ruin it. That's how much America is. So they need to stop looking at it, hating it for what it is, and really appreciate it. And let's work together on changing the things that are wrong. Yeah. And when you really boil it down to it, it's not really the constitution. It's not the constitution. It's it's the politicians we've put in place year after year for generations, and, and they have. We do have some corrupt uh, politicians. We have some, some just, systems just that need to be fixed. And that's on both sides of the aisle. Yeah, it is. It's, it's not one when you, or the other. When you put a bill in front of Congress that is 3,000 pages long, why is it not one page, two pages? Oh, why? Because they put all the pork and stuff in there. There's all these different things. That's the corruption we need to eliminate. That's what everybody's truly frustrated with. But they want you to target your frustration at President Trump, who's only been in there for the last three years. And you're talking about putting a guy, Biden, in there. Biden has been 
in that system for almost 50 years. Yep. He is one of the problems. We don't putting him in the presidency is not going to fix well, that. They blame Trump day one. Yeah. For all the problems in the United States. They, I will tell you that it has taken generations, decades and decades and decades for all of the problems that we have to get to where they are. And I feel Obama divided the state more than anybody will admit. Personally, I still don't think he's American. <laughs> but, but, you know, if I say that, I'm going to get in trouble and people are going to be hating me on this podcast. Uh, I just don't think that he had the right vision. He was bowing down to every other leader in the world and apologizing for America being America. America is the greatest country in the world, the strongest economy, the biggest economy. And unfortunately, we're getting a big-headed government to go along with it. We've got to reel it in. We've got to put term limits in place, as far as I'm concerned. Vote these people out. Maxine Waters is, she controls the area that my dad was a police officer in Hawthorne, California. I will tell you, I have, my sister-in-law lives in Hawthorne, California. The city is a financial mess, homelessness, drugs, gangs. We had, when I was living in California, we had a shop there. We had, and this is 80s and 90s, we had 37 gangs in a small town. That's unbelievable. The statistics show that, and this is not, this is just a statistics, regardless of what party you represent. The statistics show that the cities, the worst cities in this country are run by Democrats and Absolutely. have been for 10, 20, 30 years. Absolutely. Their policies don't work. But how do the people keep voting for them? Because they're being, there are people that, I'm going to, I'm going to jump into the mass thing just for a second, only because I want to make a point. There are people right now that are staunch, staunch, you have to wear a mask supporters. Yet those people, I would bet you 90% of them have done zero homework. Yeah. They have read no articles. They have not looked at what the, what the World Health Organization has to say. They are merely going off what the media has told them. And even at this point, if I were to show them the facts, they would not, but they still wouldn't change their opinion until somebody Correct. tells them they can take Correct. it off. So my point being that we are so impressionable as Americans, we're just buying what the media sells us and we're not doing our own homework. And that the media plays one of the biggest parts in the why this country is in, where it's at. And if you don't like it, if you want reform, start by stop, start by turning off the news. Yep. Stop listening to what they have to say because it's partisan, it is destructive, it is pushing a specific agendas. And I'm talking both sides. Yeah. It's it turns it, it is it is very dangerous for our uh, our country and I think they they bear the a lot of the responsibility. This is a this next subject that I wanted to talk to you about is one that is very close to my heart. Um, then I'll get into that. What more can we do for our U United States veterans and our first responders that are coming home or seeing seeing the things that police officers do? I've been on ride-alongs and I've been on a lot of them. I know. My dad was a police officer. He's been involved in a shooting. I've been involved in two shootings as a civilian in California. It's no fun. It is absolutely no fun. But what can we do to help our first responders and military that suffer from P uh, depression and PTSD? And I'm not talking about somebody who's triggered because somebody wore a MAGA hat, they need a safe space. I'm talking about real PTSD. <laughs> yeah. Because everybody falls back on it. Everybody, all the, the millennials today, most of them, need their safe spaces. You can't say a certain thing. You can't, you know, say, hey, sir, what are you doing? I'm a girl. You know, what, what are we going to do? But the real people, do you think the VA is doing enough? And do you think we as civilians are, even though we 
we claim we have support for them, are we doing enough to uh, watch out for those guys? We've got a lot of vets here. Those are great questions. As far as the VA, I really can't answer that because I'm not a veteran, um, nor am I part of the VA. So if I'm talking about my best guess on the out, outside, mm -hmm. once again, I don't want to just yeah. sit and talk no, about no, it. No, absolutely. Talk. So I, I, I think they could do more. Yeah. Look, I can do more here at my agency for things. There's always something you can do more. So to say that they can't do more, no, we, are, we know that's not true. They can do more. I can't answer and tell you how much more because yeah. I don't experience that firsthand. I respect that. Um, however, I do the best I can to, to, to help the veterans and the law enforcement guys in my agency. Um, we have a, a veterans pod over at our jail which has been extremely successful. We've got our recidivism down to just, I mean, I think we've had just a handful of veterans reoffend once they've gone through our program. It has been a tremendous program. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had it now, I think, for almost three years. It's been great. I do what I can in the jail, because yeah. I understand that a lot of those guys, the reason they're there is for the problems that precipitated with their service in the, to this country. Yeah. Here in my agency for so long, being saying you needed help mentally or for alcoholism, those were kisses of death in law enforcement. Absolutely, and we needed to just, we needed to start changing that narrative. Give these guys some reprieve from that mental health, so that it doesn't hit them on the backside when they retire, or 10 years into their career, or 15 years. So what we've done is really try to expand our peer support. Um, trainer to trainer as far as recognizing these things and then being available to help without the stigma that comes with it. We um, we're, we're, are detectives now, we're trying to put them through yearly uh, mental health examinations and our sex crimes detectives, particularly our child crimes, twice a year we put them through a mental health examination. Yeah, and one of the things, the reason this is a subject that's so close to me, um, my cousin who's a Iraq, was an Iraq, uh, veteran, came back to Arizona, he's from California, came to Arizona, became a police officer down south, um, had issues assimilating back into society, and because of his mental state, he was released from duty. Moved back to California with his wife and continually struggled with depression and anger and PTSD. At one point, there was a domestic violence call. My cousin was involved and a pursuit entailed. He ended up parking on the side of a cliff and my family back home hates cops. You know how I feel. He looked at the cop, there was a, a slight standoff. My cousin drove over the cliff. When the off responding officer went down to try to help, my cousin was armed with a hammer and he was being aggressive to the officer. That officer felt necessary to use lethal force. I'm not gonna question that. He did what he had to do. My cousin screwed up. My family screwed up worse by not acknowledging the signs and the symptoms and what was going on. I don't blame anybody in law enforcement for that actions. And he was also killed by an AR-15. Do I hate AR-15s? No, I love AR-15s. Because of my family's inability to see the signs and get the necessary help, my cousin died. Unnecessarily. And that's why this is a, a subject that's so near and dear to nah, my heart. Nah, I'm sorry, you know, and that, those are tough. And unfortunately, it's happening to a lot of families across this country, and it's, you know, I'm sorry to hear about that on your end. And But I like your attitude as far as we need to do a better job of taking responsibility where, where it is our responsibility. Absolutely. Um, we see all too often cases where people want to blame police. We're just showing up and responding and dealing with the situation yep. the best we can to protect the communities, protect ourselves. And as unfortunate as that incident was, it's hard to hold them responsible for it. No, and, and, and I, I, I like personally it. never will. Yeah. Um, like I said, I, I respect an officer's decision. My dad was involved in the shooting uh, as an officer. And myself being the absolute best shot in the family, my dad missed, which <laughs> <laughs> I, I gave him crap until he died in 2001. But, yeah. That whole 
situation and the situation with many of many of our officers today. And what people don't realize is your family is carrying a weight. Yeah. That officer will carry a weight with him his entire, entire life. life. There's no we don't get to hit a reset button. Nope. I, I, I say this all the time. I, an officer, and this is when you, you I don't know if you're going to be talking about the, the, the old defunding police thing. Are you? You know. So I'll hit it on it right let's, now. Let's hit on that. So let's talk about defunding police. Not here in my county. We've got a great county, yeah. but a lot of places are actually defunding police, which is ridiculous. What you saw in Minnesota, what you didn't like, was a training issue. Yeah. Was was that how was that guy's mental state when he went out to work that day you know as police officers we have a job to go do we have bills to pay so what happens is we walk out the door and let's say i just had an argument with my wife about we're late on the car payment and now i'm stressed and i go to work and the first call i go to is a is a one-year-old baby that's died yeah. and maybe it was a victim of abuse now the second call you go to is a suicidal subject you guys get a lot of triple. What calls. kind of mental health is my guy on? Un, you know, where is his mind now for the rest of the day? I don't get. I don't have the luxury of pulling him off the road. Yeah. So if you really wanted to benefit law enforcement, which is government's primary responsibility, is to protect their communities with military on a federal level, law enforcement on a local level. That's your responsibility first and foremost as a government. Not all these other programs. Protect the community. So what we really should have is we should have more funding so that we can have the right amount of staffing to be able to take a guy off the road Correct. so that he's not dealing with a case where he's angry or his mental state isn't right. Give me the ability to backfill that position with somebody else. I don't have enough people right now. I can't do that. Yeah. And second of all, give us enough money so we can properly train. I would love to do 10 times the training that I do. I don't have the budget for it. I don't have the staffing for it. Those are two things that you could fix for me that would seriously help all of law enforcement across this country. We're overworked. We're stressed too. We're, we're, we're regular Americans and human beings. Absolutely. We have issues that we're dealing with as well. And what we need to do is look for ways. It goes back to what your question is. How do we, how do we help those veterans and those police officers struggling with PTSD? I am a proactive police officer, not a reactive. Yeah. I believe that you can, uh, you can mitigate a lot of those things on the front end to where you don't have the PTSD levels that you do, that, that you could potentially have. And doing that by properly funding agencies, properly training, giving them the resources to, to deal with these issues, these calls for service that none of us should, no human being should have to look, see or, or investigate. Um, and give us the ability to deal with those while we're going through it so that the PTSD on the backside is, is not significant and causing a problem. Yeah. Um, we just, we're implementing a new program um, called Vitania, I think it is, where it actually helps the brain reconnect. And it's, a, from what we see, it's been very successful. We're looking forward to getting it in our agency. And we think it's going to help people with PTSD reset their brain. We, uh, we, we joke right. around here, it's like the, the men in black, black yeah. light. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Days, minutes, hours. So there are, there are programs out there, and we are trying to be, for, forward thinking, proactive on dealing with this issue so that it doesn't rear its head down the road in a situation much like you or your family went through. Yeah. We want to stop it now. Exactly. So I know that was a long roundabout way hey, of answering, you know but what? we also addressed the we're, other we're, issues. We're here, here to talk. <laughs> yeah, we're here to talk. What do you think are the major contributors to the amount of suicide calls that you get? This is a very involved question. Um, there's an increase in suicides now because of what we're doing with COVID. Yeah. Um, I keep saying, you keep talking about public health, not you, but <laughs> <laughs> we keep hearing on the new public health, public health, you did this, that. Nobody's paying attention to what it's doing to public safety, which is my job. Yeah. Increase in domestic calls, increase in child sex crimes, predators, increase in suicide, suicide attempts, 
it's because people any any suicide is is a result of depression mental health issues um people who just can't go on and or in an inability to deal with trauma at, a, at an earlier age there's a lot going on so that's there's no real safe answer but as far as drugs drugs tend to be a major contributor yeah well, this is what people, this is what I don't get why people predominantly on the left will fight against border security. They just hear the wall and they just get so upset. The wall was being built under the last president too. I got a news flash for Yeah, him. people forget that. At, at a, at a, they were building a ton of wall. Yeah. Um, they were also sending a lot of people back to their well, home countries. I think that administration deported more than any, his, any president in history. This president is actively trying to protect our borders. Th this is why this is important. They estimate that 40 to 50 percent of all illegal drugs in the entire country, Ohio, Iowa, North Carolina, South Carolina, wherever you are, 40 to 50 percent of those drugs came through the borders of Arizona. So that's you not, have that's to... That's not making us look good as Arizona people. Yeah. It, you know, but it... it it is what it is because we're on the border. Yeah. So it's Texas, Arizona, uh, New Mexico, and California, but almost half of those drugs are coming through Arizona's borders. That's part of your problem. But the interesting part about that statistic is in doing some research, they claim that 40% of the people coming across the border from tech are coming through Texas, 40% are coming through California. And they're claiming only 5 to 10% are coming through our borders here in Arizona. I find that hard to believe, and I think that's another uh, another one of those statistics and, and finds that is suiting somebody else's agenda. Yeah, I would agree with that. I I mean, I can tell you right now, we whenever we go out and we have apprehensions, we're we're up in the teens. You know, we're over 10 apprehensions. Yeah. Um, 80 pounds of meth the other day, 4.4 pounds of fentanyl, um, hmm. another 40 or 50 pounds of meth the, uh, a few days ago again. So it, the drugs that are coming in here are contributing to the mental health of people in this country. If you care about human beings, this is not a political issue. Yeah. If you care about human beings, you should absolutely care about border security because drug trafficking and human trafficking into this country has to be stopped. That's It's affecting our communities, and the, the cartels are making as much money off of bodies as they are off of drugs now. And that's because of the fact that they are doing... Um, are we losing that? I'm losing it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's because they are doing... I'll tighten this up here. It's because they are... Um, the reason it's important is because they're raping the women, yeah. they're using the kids as pawns, they're extorting the men. All of this behavior should be unacceptable to every American. Every American should care about border security. Yeah. I hate that they make it a political issue because this is something that each and every American, regardless of party, should care about. Now remember this in November. Uh, Kalama. Kalama Harris or Kalama Harris or whatever it is. Whatever it is, I know. I guess you got to say it right. If she's here. if she sees this, I'm going to be blacklisted from Twitter or something. In uh, Biden, they're one of their major. Sorry, ideas. people. That's me adjusting the mic. If you're <laughs> if you're listening to it on the, <laughs> it's uh, falling a little it's bit. Falling a little bit there. Okay, got the, it. The bobble head is pushing it off. Uh, remember in November that Trump wants to secure our borders and the Biden ticket wants to open them. If we open them, we're going to open it up to a floodgate of tens of thousands of new illegal immigrants coming through our borders, carrying drugs, taking jobs away from the, the American people. And, and the only way to continue to secure our border is to vote in November. And I think everybody, I'm not going to tell anybody how to vote. I'm going to say that I know how I am. I'm sure Mark knows how he is. Uh, and it's not in a, in a blue way, put it that way. Now, let's kind of get into uh, something that I know we were, you were just mentioning, which is the human, tra human trafficking and missing children. Um, 
I know you don't want to get too deep into this one, but approximately 80 or 800,000 ch children a year come up missing. 50 percent, 57% are returned home. That's not a good statistic. Where are the rest? What is happening to them? And how does re adrenochrome play into this? This is a, you know, this is an issue that I think is very important. Uh, right now, you hear all this talk on the media about um, the rioting and the looting, or, or, or in predominantly Black Lives Matter movement, which I think has been hijacked by um, people who hate America. Follow the money, people. Look up Black Lives Matter Foundation. Follow the money. You'll be surprised. But the other issue is, is that. So, you know, this is a big issue for me. I think this is one of the most important important issues facing America right now. But the media is only talking about COVID. They're talking about, um, you know, injustices that they are perceiving. And in many cases, maybe they are. But this that's what they're talking about. They're not talking about what I think is important, which is the amount of sex trafficking, particularly the children. How does 800,000 children in this country go missing and, and we don't, I we mean, don't we, we shut this country down back before I think there was even 15 to 20,000 deaths in this country. We shut it down for COVID, which we actually told, we quarantined healthy people, which makes no sense, but that's a whole different conversation. Yeah. But we shut this country down. We lost 800,000 children last year. Children, the most innocent of our of our population, and we didn't do anything. We've done very little about it. You don't hear the media talking about it. That should alarm Americans. If your elected officials are not talking about that, then we might need new elected officials in there. I absolutely um, agree. President Trump just allocated $430 million to help combat that. Um, there is a, a serious problem. Now, the FBI, just so people, if people go look up the numbers, the FBI, according to Nick Mick, the FBI had 421,000 cases, and I think in 2018 it was 424,000 cases. But Nick Mick, which is the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, um, which was also re uh, was reported by ABC News, the numbers are estimated at 800,000 for actually children that go missing. Yeah. That's a problem. It's a big problem. And where is the outrage? Where are these programs? And then I, I, I don't, I've looked into adrenochrome. And I mean, it, people, here's the thing is you don't usually just come up with stuff. No. There's usually some rhyme or reason to it. And it's been around for a while. And uh, it's been around. And it's, if we should all be appalled um, at how that is, comes about. And we should, we should question, you know, why are we not talking about, why are we not going after this? Because there's plenty of evidence to show where they've gone in and, and actually taken down child uh, torture areas, yeah. those types of things. So we as Americans need to open our eyes to what's going on, the amount of trafficking, um, the kids that, that go missing. My heart goes out to those families, to those kids. And I, for one, try to be a voice of, for this as much as I can yeah. because it is something. Just to give you, this is a problem across the country. And it is hard to recognize the predators, the people that actually do it. We're starting to hear rumors of, of very powerful people being involved in this type of behavior. Yep. And it's unacceptable. Well, we're, we're not going to get heavy into what adrenochrome is all about. I asked and implore you guys to go out and do some research. It's actually not the easiest subject to research. Um, you won't find a whole lot, but I'll, I'll tell you it's been around for centuries and it continues today, in my opinion. Let's talk, and we have touched on this a little bit. Let's talk about what the public can do and the posse program. How does the public get involved with the posse program? Do you have to live in Pinal County to be part of Pinal County's posse? No, you don't. Um, so we actually have we have multiple volunteer organizations. I just recently started, just had my class last Saturday, uh, the Citizens Posse first class. This is much like a Citizens Academy. Yeah. Um, 
let me break it down. We have a patrol posse, which are guys that come in. They spend about, they do about 350 hours of training. Mm -hmm. They put on a uniform. They have guns. They have take-home cars, and they go out and assist patrol. They do not have arresting powers. They are not deputized. And they're not, they, they are part of our posse. And they don't carry a post certification. They do not carry a post certification. Then I have citizens on patrol, which is much like a block watch, yeah. where they'll come out, wear a polo. Predominantly elderly uh, make up the ranks of my citizens on patrol. Mm -hmm. What I saw was I've been wanting to do more. I've been wanting to get the, the I'm always looking for programs to involve the community with the sheriff's office. I don't think you can go wrong there. No, no. And I wanted to educate people more. And then with everything going on now where people are feeling uneasy and uncertain and they don't, they, they don't know what to do or how to help, uh, we thought it was a good time to implement the citizens posse. 2,500 applicants in a very Almost 3,000 now. Oh my gosh. Almost 3,000, and so... Put me on that list. <laughs> it is going to take us a little bit to get through. We're going to do a lot of virtual classes. Yeah. What we're going to actually do is put the class on virtually. That's going to enable us to knock out a lot of them. Um, what we're, The goal is is that there are constantly emergencies, um, floods, fires, rioting and looting, whatever it may be. I, uh, as a sheriff, under Title 11, my responsibilities are that I am to prevent or suppress any affrays, breaches in security, insurrections, riots, um, uh, breaches in, of the peace, insurrections or riots that come to my knowledge. That's my responsibility. Yeah. I only have 220 sworn deputies. How many square miles? I have 55, almost 5,500 square miles, which is the size of the state of Connecticut. That is a lot of area to cover. Only 100 of my deputies are patrol. Yeah. So if I have a major incident and I needed 50 deputies to go out, how do I man that? So what I thought was, and I'm not just talking about the rioting and the looting. I'm talking about a fire. A natural disaster. A natural disaster. Uh, something major where I can use the assistance of some of our citizens who want to help. They can come out. And help me. So part of Title 11 also says that the sheriff can command as many inhabitants of the county as he deems necessary to aid him in completing his mission. So if you if if that is available to me and we have a major emergency, I don't I have not found anybody that doesn't agree with me. If I have to call out citizens, wouldn't you want that I have at least given them some instruction? Yeah, absolutely. And th so this is not designed to be a day-to-day -day thing. They're not going out. They don't have any authority. They don't have power. This us. is an educational tool. And if if an emergency arose, it would give me the ability to get some help from the general public, from some of our citizens. Yeah. And I think that everybody should be saying, hey, thank you for being thinking ahead and planning and making sure that our county is as safe as it can be. And we achieve a lot. Plus, I, I think this is going to help in recruiting. Yeah. Just the other day, I had multiple people there that were interested in coming to work as deputies for the sheriff's office or as detention officers or maybe volunteer for the patrol posse. So it's going to help with my recruiting, which now in this day and age, recruiting has become even harder than it already was. I feel like we this is going to be a great program. We had really good feedback Saturday from what we did. Um, we talked constitutional law, we talked search and seizure, we talked um, home protection, firearm safety, and we give them resources to be able to further their knowledge. We want to do a monthly newsletter which gives them more and more training um, and just have them be part of this community. That's awesome. And kind of squelch some of those feelings of uneasiness and during these difficult times. That's one of the things I have an issue with living in, in Maricopa County is uh, Sheriff Penzone eliminated the posse, eliminated Tent City, eliminated chain gangs. All these things were fantastic. He was, uh, Arpaio may have been kind of a narcissist, a lot of a narcissist, and a politician, but he cared about the county. And he cared about animal rights, human rights. He cared about making sure there wasn't a revolving door to criminals 
they went in and they went into Tent City. They did not like going to Tent City, especially here during the summer. I would love to see that back. The sides of the roads were much cleaner when we had chain gangs out there cleaning them. That's, you know, they're getting paid to do this. That's not slave labor. You know, a lot of it is the judges. Yeah. For example, I can't just put, people say, well, hey, Sheriff, put the inmates. Well, you got to remember, the people in my jail are there, they're non-adjudicated, which means in, in most of the people in there are non-adjudicated, which means they are under, they are charged with a crime, but they have not been found guilty of a crime. Yeah. So the judges most often do not give them the ability to go out and work in the, in the streets. And so that's why you don't see a lot of sheriff's change gangs. Most of the people you'll see are actual prison inmates who have been adjudicated and they uh, agree to go out and work yeah. out there. And remember, most judges are elected officials. Remember that. Yes, and it's good to remember. Yeah, uh, and, that's and it's, where a it's, lot of the breakdowns in society yeah. are. Frankly, it's tough to research a lot of them because some of their their history is kind of obscure, and it's hard to understand what their conviction records like. What you know, were they soft on one person? I don't. I don't see why somebody who was smoking a joint in, in the backyard of their house has to get ten years, but somebody who committed murder of a child gets probation. It happens. And, and it's sickening. Yeah. The system is broken. It is. There's a lot of things we need to fix. Yeah. Um, you know, law enforcement, we can do some things better, but to throw a blanket of reform on law enforcement across this country is not fair no, either because no. a lot of us are doing a lot of good things and our communities, we, we do a lot of programs in the communities and you know, it's it's unfair to a lot of the agencies that are doing it well. And that's why I wanted to sit down with you. I mean, you know, I've been a, a big supporter of you all along. I don't live in the county. My family does. My, my mom and my brothers do. Uh, one of the things that's important is to get to know your officials. Sit down with them if you get a chance. Spend some time. Find out. You know, I trust my gut, I trust my heart, I trust my head. And from day one, you struck me as just the right guy for the job. And thank you. And one of my, one of my uh, writing questions from one of my customers, <laughs> this one's kind of funny, how can we clone him for Maricopa? <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you figure it out, let me know because I could use a, I could use a helping hand too. Uh, you know, it's a lot of work. This is, is this job is hard. It is what you can you make it. I mean, I always joke I could sit there like Boss Hog and and do nothing. Um, you know, and some people will criticize some of the out of the box thinking that I've done, but I feel like what we've done is promoted pos Pinal County in a positive light. We've, we've been able to pr create a better work environment for our employees. We've got our budget under control. Yeah. You know, we, in the last two years we've come in under budget. It took us two years to fix it. Um, and so that's an incredible feat. We've done a lot of things and um, it's not easy. It's not easy on my family. It's not easy on my... With social media, it never stops for me. Yeah. So you post something it, and I have, you know, you want to stay relevant as far as being active in your community and having people know what you're doing and feel like they're part of the sheriff's office and and feel endeared to law enforcement um, it's a lot of work yeah it's a lot of work and I it's hard my family is, is I'm blessed with a good family that understands it and we're we are all patriots at heart and we understand that sacrifices have to be made yeah for freedom I didn't win the gun no, no, it was, it was uh, we had a, a tremendous amount of support on that. I saw that bucket of tickets. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was, was a lot. A lot. Yeah. That it was, was awesome. We, uh, it was a guy actually from Oracle, ironically. Really? really? Yeah. Yeah, Oracle is here in the county. Yeah. So we were prepared to go wherever. We always kind of hoped that somebody can out you, of state wins imagine, it. Can you imagine if somebody in California won it, they couldn't have it? Yeah, I know. I, I know. <laughs> well, if, when you move to Arizona, you can have this fire. Right? <laughs> well, what we were prepared to do was give the equivalent of what the rifle cost yeah, yeah. to give it to them. 
Yeah, they probably. But they would have been bummed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I uh, we the first time I did a cowboy hat raffle, the winner was in Florida. Really? Yeah, and it was great. I mean, all the winners that we've had have been fantastic, but um, it was nice to be able to go out to Florida to meet up with her. And, that's and so cool. uh, she, to this day, is still a good friend That's and very awesome. supportive. That is so cool. This one might be a little... This is going to be tough for a lot of the United States um, because I know I blocked the channel after this happened. <laughs> do you know what this is yes, about? Yes, I do. Thoughts on uh, the cancellation of Live PD? Um, obviously, I was disappointed when yeah. they canceled Live PD. I don't armchair. I don't like to armchair quarterback because when people make decisions, we don't. Uh, we don't have all the all the, the information. Facts. We don't have all the information. A um, and E is owned by a bigger company. I highly doubt that A and E wanted to get rid of Live PD. Well, Live PD was their lifeblood. It was it was the number one rated show on Fridays and Saturdays on cable TV, yep. dominating, had tremendous numbers, um, but they made a decision to cut it. So I don't critique why they did it. Mm -hmm. I was disappointed. You know, I think that it was good for law enforcement. I think it was the best thing for law enforcement in decades yeah. because it put a human a touch on police work. You got to see different officers in different situations working their canines, uh, male and female officers, and the, the struggles that they do have to deal with every day. How many people are pulled over that don't have insurance, don't have a license, and run from you? It's, it's incredibly high numbers. People don't realize that. I listen to the scanner every night. I would say most of the traffic stops that, say, DPS does, probably 60% of them don't have insurance, and it's MI suspended. So what are people thinking? <laughs> I mean, if, it's if I that, could answer that question, that'd be... It, it, uh, but it, it, it's amazing to me, because here Live PD was such an open book. They didn't try to hide things. They shielded you from the gore, which... I think is fantastic because people have been desensitized to it. Yeah. And that's another problem that we have is, you know, it's okay on these video games to go murdering everybody and killing police and doing whatever they need to do. Um, but I think that falls back on upbringing. I, what irritates me the most is this cancel culture. Oh, gosh. This woke <laughs> movement. These people who think they're woke. Um, what I it really is is you're in your. These people are, are interfering on other people's freedoms because they don't like your freedom. Correct. Look, I don't, I don't interfere on other people's freedoms. Uh, if you break the law, it's my job. Yep. Okay? So put that out there because there's going to be people be like, yes, you do. You're a cop. You do interfere on people's freedoms all the time. Well, no, no. Don't, don't break the law. They made a decision to violate a law. Correct. I ha am in the position to have to, to hold it. them responsible or, or put them in front of a judge to be to be adjudicated you're just a mediator between the crime and the judge we do our job yeah and so but I on a personal level and I, even as a law enforcement you see I believe in freedom personal responsibility uh, I believe that this whole cancel culture is backfiring on on a lot of these companies that that are are the huge pushers and proponents of yeah. the cancel culture and now they're losing money because of it. I think, you know, a lot of them had a knee jerk reaction to uh, George Floyd's death and instead of doing research into Black Lives Matter and all these movements that do absolutely nothing for black lives. Remember Trump has done more for black lives than Black Lives Matter will ever do. Um, I think what we, we can, I, can I interject? There? Yeah, go ahead. Because these people that consider themselves woke, you I, don't, I laugh every time I hear that term. You don't like what happened yeah. in in Minnesota to George Floyd. You have you. They, these people don't truly care about humanity. What about Connor? They pick and choose. What about Connor? What about that little boy? What about all the life, the law enforcement lives that have been lost since then? What about what about the, the Chicago? 
and the consistent shootings and killings going on there. What is hip so hypocritical and so angry, makes, it just makes me so frustrated, is you are not about a cause. You're not woke. If you were woke, you'd be talking about these things. What you are is somebody who doesn't like America and you don't like freedom and you want socialism and communism. Yeah. If you, just own up to it. If you're so woke, it, own up to it and own up to the fact that it's not truly about a person or about human beings. And I'm sure when people see this video, they're going to say, oh, I'm a white supremacist. I am not. I'm actually mixed and I got a whole lot of everything in me. But I'm not somebody who just all of a sudden became woke. I'm somebody who over the years has spent my time educating myself and learning all these different things and making my own decisions. Not being told by some group that this is the way you need to be. You need to give up your house now. You need to do, you know, uh, go loot. It's reparations, it's this, it's that. The woke culture and the cancel culture is truly destroying America. And they're a small minority. They are, they're such a small minority. But they have big funding behind it. And them. if they're so woke, get out of your parents' basement. Yeah, I think 99% of the problem, didn't. it's not with police. It's, it's not with, well, there is a lot of problem with our government. The problem is, for the first 18 years of your life, and sometimes less, your parents didn't smack the crap out of you when you did something wrong. They didn't spend the time to teach you the difference between right and wrong. I tell you, I got my ass whooped when I did something wrong. I had the fear of God when I knew I screwed up and my dad was coming home. I grew up respecting my elders, respecting my friends, respecting and loving my family. Yeah. And without the parental units being able to be that solid base, that solid foundation, it's, there's nobody's fault. But the parenting that's happening nowadays and the kids disrespecting parents and also not being able to, to do anything to your child anymore as as a punishment if you if you, you it's know. all a lack of it's all a lack of personal responsibility right. either you didn't dis you didn't treat tra you know raise your kids or discipline them right uh, but even then you still have kids that go off they're just yeah. everybody's their own individual person but you know we've got i tell people this all the time you want to blame somebody which i don't do the blame game really yeah but if you do want to blame somebody, blame yourself. You know why? Because we're the ones that keep voting these daggum politicians in that keep screwing this country up. And then I, we want to blame somebody else. I didn't vote for them either. But but there are there's on both sides, Republicans and Democrats, there are people that have been in there for 20, 30, 40 years in Congress. 50 years. 50 years. Same people. And we are now talking about keeping one of the guys who's been part of the core part of the problem and actually to trying to put him in as president. The most powerful man in the world. The reason they don't like Donald Trump, President Trump. They can't control him. Is because they can't control him and he is rocking the boat. That should make everybody in this country smile. Yeah. Because what you don't like about the system, you should want President Trump because he's bucking the system. Correct. What they've done, though, is they've made you believe he's the enemy. <laughs> when in reality... It's that whole, the guy who's guilty, uh, for, to not to be crude, but it's the guy who farts, and the first thing he does is look at the guy next to him and say, hey, did you hear that? I do that with my wife all the time. <laughs> but that's, what, the that's what they're doing. So, um, I don't know. Now you got me all riled, you got me all riled <laughs> up talking about this stuff. Well, you know what? That's, this, is, this is real you. This is what I want. This is what I wanted to see. This is what I want the public to see. So, you know, let's talk COVID. Some lady actually asked me. She's like, when, we, when I said that I wouldn't arrest people or cite people or throw people in jail for, for opening their business up. Or, or masks. Yeah, for doing all that stuff. Um, somebody said to me, they're like, well, you're the only person not doing that. And I said, no. I'm the only person that was dumb enough to say it, say it. Uh, or, uh, or, uh, or smart or not smart enough. I, I was either not, I was either the only one that was too dumb to keep my mouth shut. Yeah. And Elizabeth, my wife, who's sitting over there, when we were getting out of the car, she goes, do we need our masks? I'm like, nope. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if you notice, uh, we're not, we're, we're not wearing our masks. Um, 
I just, in my opinion, if it makes you feel good, wear the damn mask. Sure. Don't get on me for not wearing one. Don't get on one or get on the sheriff for not wearing one. It's inappropriate. And in many cases, what I've seen online, it's actually against the law. Correct. You can actually, by challenging somebody with a mask on, you can very easily potentially be be committing a misdemeanor crime of disorderly conduct. Go and read it. We've Go read it. the statute if you don't believe me. Look at the lady in Walmart. And I'm actually going to instruct my people that if we get called for a call like that, you will be arrested if you were the one that instigated it by challenging somebody without a mask or with a mask. Yeah. Either way. Like, be respectful of each other. Yeah. We're all no favorites. It's Just walk around that person. Yep. They're not putting you or your families at risk. That's a that's what the media wants you to believe. Well, the facts don't support that. That that's interesting that you happen to say that because this takes us into our next subject that I wanted to touch on. I know, I know for a fact you get different numbers than are being fed to the media, and or fed to the public. Why, in your opinion, do you think the real numbers are not being reported? I.e., recovery rates. Why is the meeting so willing to instill fear rather than fact? That is a great question. I've asked the same. We don't get different numbers. I mean, we're not getting any inside information. That's one of the things that I think that they've done wrong. Yeah. I think they could have done a much better job of communicating. Um, I think that the numbers are, are not good. When you put bad data in, you're going to get bad data out. But even the numbers being at where they are, because I think the numbers are way uh, accentuated. I think that they've listed people as COVID deaths that weren't COVID deaths. Absolutely. Um, there are people that are, I've had no less than 50 people tell me that they know somebody. And so I, I can't say whether this is for true, but I've had, when you have so many people telling you, you know, my daughter knows, has a friend who didn't show up for his test and got a positive test back in the mail. I hear about Whenever that you hear about those things, you have to start questioning the numbers. But anyway, either way, let's take the numbers for what they are, for whatever they've reported them. Yeah. There's a way you talk about it. You know, when we opened it back up, what they should have said was, yes, we're going to see a rise in, in cases. We open back up. We expect to see that, especially after the rioting and the looting that went on. We expect to see an increase in the numbers. Yes, there's an increase in hotel beds or um, hospital beds. Actually, because there's an increase now. Well, initially, because yeah. for two and a half months, all those elective surgeries we pushed off. So that's why you saw an increase in beds initially. Now it's been a decrease. You've seen a decrease in the amount of deaths. You've seen this. I don't understand why our local governments or governments across this country, the federal government, I think, did a good job of turning it over to the states. Yeah. Now, so many states, some states are doing it right. Some states are choose to talk about the fear side of it, make people fear it, which is why people are challenging each other in public, because the government has been feeding them. Our local our, media is guilty. of The this. media and the government have been feeding the fear, saying, hey, this is where everything's going really bad. No, it's not. they would. I think that they could have approached the numbers very different. Look. One of the things is we're having an open conversation. Yeah. I believe in staying in my lane. My lane is law enforcement. Um, but I also, I have in my job, I have to talk about information as well. Yeah. I could sit there and make people f afraid of the numbers that I give them, the amount of crimes, or I can make them feel comfortable and know that we've got it under control. Yeah. And that's what I do because we do have it under control. I think that so many other local governments and state governments could have done a better job of of portraying the numbers even though i think the numbers are bad by saying and saying look we've got it under control there's no need to be alarmed yes unfortunately my this is part of life that some people will pass away from yeah. this and it's and it's horrible and i pray for all those families but it's part of life if you're trying to reduce risk in this life good luck the only thing you're guaranteed, you're, the, the biggest, the absolute 100% biggest contributor to death is life. Being born, having the gift from God to be born, maximize what we have, respect others, smile, get through your life. It's all about what you make it. 
and looking at numbers, looking at the way things are reported. It's frustrating, but I think our media, especially our local media here, because we just time and time again, instead of, let's put the numbers out there briefly so people can see it, but let's start talking about hope. Let's start talking about those yes. that have recovered. Let's start talking about the fact that these people are out of the hospital now. People have heard me say this quote, and I believe in it wholeheartedly, and it was ironically from Napoleon Bonaparte, who even though he failed, had a lot of good quotes, and he had a lot of, but he, uh, he says that leaders are dealers in hope. Yeah. That's what we're here for. We're here to give you hope that it's going to be good. It's going to be okay. The fear mongering, no. And the media is doing enough of that as it is. For all of you who are listening, go look at the numbers of how how much viewership CNN, MSNBC, Fox was already way better than them. Yeah. Those other had COVID not hit a lot of those channels were they were getting 100,000 viewership was horrible. They were they were ranked so low and now they're in the top 10, top 20. Do you think they want to stop talking about COVID? No. No. Because they're making bank right now. But they won't talk about Connor. Because it doesn't, they won't it talk about Connor because it doesn't fit their narrative. They don't want people to wake up, truly wake, wake up, up, to what's going on in this country. Because Americans do need to wake up. We need to wake up to the freedoms you're losing. And people say, well, no, the, you know, yes, That's you are. That's complacency is why we're in the position we're in now. That's right. It, it, that old adage, like, hey, first they came for those who... Uh, wore orange shirts, and then they came for those who wore shoes, and then they came for this. And when they finally came for me, there was nobody left. Yeah. I know I didn't say that right, but that's the well, gist of it. Well, you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna get the get the gist of it. I know how you feel about closing down the businesses and everything like that. I know Doug Ducey. You've spent time with him. The governor. In my opinion, hasn't done certain things right. But again, this is armchair quarterbacking. I'm part of a small business. I, have, I help a friend of mine run his hobby store. Um, the fact, during this whole time when the shutdown occurred, the fact that big box stores, Walmart, big companies, Home Depot, all these other places were safe to open up, and the mom and pop that had a better chance of regulating people's social distancing or wearing masks, the mom and pops had a much better opportunity to be a part of reducing the number in COVID deaths and COVID positives. What is, and and this, is, this may be controversial for you. Do you think we would have been better off putting, to, putting in place standards of limitations on how many people can come in like we do with restaurants now they're at 50 percent up in Gilbert where I'm at um, or would we have better been better off just letting herd immunity take take place and uh, deal with consequences well I don't think you need to call it herd immunity what I think we would have been better off is following the Constitution respecting people's rights everybody what you do is you educate people yeah you don't inf you don't force them in America, you're supposed to educate. What you do is you say, if you have these health issues, if you're elderly, we're seeing these, you're at the highest risk levels. Here are some things you can do to protect yourselves. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. Um, if you, you know what you don't hear? And this should be alarming to people. When have you heard the government tell you to take vitamin C as preventative measures, to do some of these other things that you can do? As a matter of fact, if a, if a doctor's office has it, I'm not mistaken. My, I talked to my doctor the other day. They said they will shut you. They'll, they'll send you a letter saying, take that off your website or we'll shut your website down. That should be alarming to the American people. They're forcing you into something that what they really want is everybody to take a vaccine. Well, I don't, I ain't taking a vaccine either. If you don't Amen. think I want to wear a mask, wait till you try to give me a vaccine. Bill Gates so, Foundation has uh, put a lot of unnecessary technology, and a lot of it has to do with sterilization of children. What we should have done is just continue to educate people. And let, let, 
if people don't want to go to a business, if they feel like they're putting themselves at risk, then Stay they home. shouldn't go. Stay home. Stay home. If a business feels like the best thing to do for their employees is to have their employees wear masks, then have your employees wear masks. Yeah. If we would have just kept going, we would have, we would have seen, uh, we would have been impacted. Everybody was impacted because we're impacted with the flu every year. Absolutely, we're More impacted people, with a lot of things. And I'm not trying people to. People have forgotten the numbers of how many flu deaths we have every year. I looked up last week. I looked it up, flu deaths from 2019 for that last week, and it was 56 flu deaths from last week from last year, and. This year, um, just that one day that I had looked was only eight co was not I don't want to say only was eight COVID deaths. Mm -hmm. So you're about the same as what you were when the flu was out there. Yeah. Um, if I'm this would have hit in a non, there is so much information out there that can make you question the timing of what's happening in this country. I, I'm just saying, it's turn off the news. Turn off the news and really. Well, I've always said, since this started, the the cure is going to be out there the day after the election. Yeah. Businesses should have continued in business and let the people decide. Let the market determine itself. Yeah. Um, I can understand certain things, movie theaters, but even then. I'm not one that thinks that the government should restrict things. No. Just because you have the right or the um, ability to do it doesn't mean that you should do it or, or use that, exercise that executive order or that executive, uh, you know, there's a lot of governors, they have that in, under an emergency order. And I would hope that after this year that our legislature will go back and really address that law that allows governor in this state allows our governor to be able to do these emergency orders with no time frame on them. Um, but I, having said that, look, I know a lot of people are upset. I am glad I'm not in the governor's shoes because there's been a lot of uh, a lot of tough things, tough decisions he's had to make. I think everybody, uh, you know, needs to take a step back and say. And, and give our government a break, a little bit of a break, and say, you know what? Yeah, yeah. you got Nobody a lot on your plate. Yeah, well, let's get the businesses back. Get, the business get back. those people back to work. There's, I don't think there's any cases that I know of, and I, I thought somebody told me the other day that um, even Kara Chris from the state and somebody else got up there and said there are no known cases of anybody getting it at a gym. And we should be encouraging people. When I had COVID, I think what helped me get through it was when I started going out and walking in the backyard and just getting sun on my body and just being active, and it kicked it right away. No, personal question. Did anybody else in your family no. test positive? No. Nobody tested positive. Nobody from the event that I had had, a yard sign event, yeah. which is where I think I got it. Um, nobody from my office. Nobody that I know of contracted COVID yeah, from, sure. uh, that was around me. Interesting. I know Mike also said about the same time, you, you guys had the conversation that you, you, were, you were telling him, you had it. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people that have had it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think a lot of, because I really wouldn't have known. I, was, I just felt a little run down, I had a little bit of a cough. Yeah. I don't know that I would have thought that I had COVID. Yeah. Um, so it's tough. I think a lot of people probably have had it and don't realize it. Uh, I think the longer we keep holding things out, the longer it's going to take us to get through this. Yep, I do too. Now, these are just going to be fun. All right. Oh, you probably read the back of that a little bit. I saw you? one. <laughs> <laughs> probably the one at the bottom. No, I saw the Pepsi versus Coke. Okay, we'll start at the top. Here's where we're going to have a little fun with some rapid fire questions okay. for, for Mark. Talk, texting or talking? Talking. Well, uh, depends on who it is. <laughs> okay, Some people you don't you know they talk a lot. So your you don't wife, wanna, my wife, talk. Uh, you hesitated and your eyes shifted. Uh, I, don't, I don't. I don't fully believe well, you committed to that. Answer. We're not. We're not those <laughs> parents. We're not that couple that text and talk each other all day long. Yeah. I can look back and my wife might text me once or twice in a week. Is it always the at the most inopportune time? No, she's good about it. She's I, good. I, my wife has really got to got to learn. Yeah. Last song you downloaded? Last song I downloaded was 
Vacation by Dirty Heads. I have to look that one up. I'm not familiar with it. On a scale of one to ten, how good of a driver are you? <laughs> well, I don't know. Not according to your wife. Uh, my wife thinks I suck. I need to do a better job of staying off my phone because it's the law now. It's the law. It's the law now. Yeah. I'm just being real with you. And texting and, dri- texting yeah. and driving is I not don't know. Cool. Maybe a seven or eight. Although... I can law do better. Law enforcement is actually exempt from that. We are, but we, we don't want our guys, you yeah. know, we encourage them because we still have the computers and other things we're dealing with, so. Yeah. Okay. You know the question. Pepsi or Coke? Coke with the lime. Ugh. But I'm a Mountain Dew guy. Okay, I can respect that. I'm a Mountain Dew guy, but you only ask between Pepsi and Coke. Yeah, okay. I, res- I respect that. I can do Mountain Dew, too. But yesterday I made a decision. I'm going to cut out caffeine and sugars Oh, you're screwed. for a month. No, no Mountain Dew? No Mountain Dew for a month. You are so screwed. No soda. Um, I'll be. You caught me on a good day. You'd caught me in two or three more days. I might have been an angry, <laughs> an angry person. I doubt. I doubt that. <laughs> um, everyday carry. Everyday carry is a Glock 34, or my Glock 17. I happen to carry a yeah. Glock 34 every day. I'm a believer that if you're going to get into a gunfight, you may as well have a good gun. Absolutely. So luckily, I'm bigger and I can carry it. But that's, I always carry a full Gen, size Gen gun. Gen 2 through? Gen 5. Gen 5. Yeah. I've got a Gen 2 that I carry every day. The 34 has optics on it, and then the, nine, the, the Glock 17 doesn't. But. Nice. So this, you might have already given this one up to me. Favorite caliber? Favorite caliber? Um, 223. Yeah. Um, my favorite gun of... Was my thirty thirty when I was young. Well, okay. Favorite uh, gun today. Favorite gun today. You look your pistols only to get you back to your rifle. So two two three. If I was if I was stuck on an island or wherever, I'd want a rifle with. You know, all the years of shooting, I used to shoot between eight and ten thousand rounds a month when I was competing, and uh, I actually got to the point where I was better with my pistol than I was with a rifle or shotgun. Uh, we were at Rio Salado, my brother and I, and I was standing up shooting offhand with my 34, my iron sights, 200 yard steels. The RSO came over, asked my brother, what is he shooting at? He said 200 yard steel. He can't hit that. So I continued to empty the magazine and every round hit the, hit the steel. The RSO from Rio Salado just turned around and walked away. <laughs> that's, I, that's impressive. That, that's I, impressive. I was actually uninvited to any future events at Long Beach Police uh, at their range in California because I whipped their yeah. best shooter's ass with yeah. a stock HKP7 M13. That's awesome. That's good shooting. Yeah, I used to be. I still am, actually. Favorite food? Favorite food? Probably chili and rice. That's an odd combination to me. So I'm from Hawaii, so we eat rice with everything. Um, Manapuas. Yeah, Manapuas. But I like chili and rice. Poke. Um, I like a loco moco. I'm I'm not a fan of poke. I'm not. I can eat it, but I'm not a. Yeah, I'm I'm not a fan. I didn't know what it was. I went to a party one night. (laughs) Poke party. I'm like, "Uh, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Is it wrong for a vegetarian to eat animal crackers? That's a good question. I'm going to have to remember that question for the future. I don't know. I'm not a vegetarian, so I wouldn't know. Okay, okay. You see, you're taking the easy route out on that. Yeah. And this is for the ladies out there. He's married, happily married, been married for a long time. Boxers or briefs? Uh, Boxers. Not a combination of? Uh, Depends when I'm working out. More of a boxer brief. Ah, There you go. Uh, Duluth Trading Company, my wife started buying those for me. Those are the best. Those are yeah. awesome. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Mark, I want to thank you so much. Oh, that's easy for the for that was coming easy. out, man. Yeah, or let me come up and uh, wow. sit down with you and take some time out of your busy day. Pleasure's all mine. I'm hopefully, sure we've either... Hopefully we, we, we can do this Some again. people will like us today and some people that won't. You know, it's an honor having you as a guest on my first podcast. And... Uh, the, the time's flown by. It, I know you've you've got a busy day, but uh, again, it it just means a lot to me for you to take the time to uh, sit down and and speak openly. 
And I know you always do. It's one thing you always get from me. Yeah. That's why the media calls me and they, because they know I, uh, they'll get a, a straight, straight up answer. answer. Yeah, I hear you. It doesn't always work in my favor. Well, you know, like I've always said, don't ask a question you can't handle the answer to. And that's the fact. That's how and I live the other my thing life. is, is, is don't be afraid to stand up for your principles. Absolutely. And your, and your values. Absolutely. Um, I just would just challenge all your listeners to hopefully take stock in, in what America is and, and how important our freedoms are. Yeah. Um, please stop listening to the media and start doing your own homework. Yeah. And really looking into some of the major issues, because if the if they're talking about it on the media, that's not what they want you to. There's something they don't want you to yeah. see. It, um, we are in a, a very critical time in this country. I would encourage you to get out and vote this time around. Um, and those local positions matter. Yeah. Those, they matter. Those are the people that are making laws that affect you on your day-to-day -day li uh, life. Absolutely. So, and, you know, as a Christian, end times is here. We're here. We got to do the best we can till the, till the day comes. Come uh, on, come yeah. on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> every day, I think we're a little bit closer, little bit closer that's for closer, sure. You know, we pray for you guys every day. We pray Thank for you. your, your safety and, and that you have uh, God's guidance. And we really uh, wish you the best. I hope you have an exceptionally long career here. Thank you. And uh, congratulations. I hope it's not too long because yeah. this takes a piece out of you. It does, but, you know. I, I don't know how. I, I have zero desire to go anywhere else. I love being here. I hope to be the sheriff for a long time. There you go. Um, how long that is, I don't know because it's a lot. You know, you, you ran. Now you're running unopposed. And... Uh, you know, congratulations on that. You've instilled fear in any of your <laughs> your people that want to step up and try to say, hey, I'm uh, better. Hopefully they just, they like me, but... <laughs> Everybody that doesn't like you is doing something wrong. Yeah, and then they say, if you're not, if, if, there's, if everybody likes you, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, yeah. and you're pissing the right people off. <laughs> because the, your constituents and all the people that I know in Pinal County... Um, oh, that's good. Really happy to have you on board. We wish you, you know, not just four more years, but as many as you want to be here and as many as you feel you can be an effective sheriff. Well, thank you. And uh, anything that I can do to help you bring the word out, never hesitate to give me a call. I'll be there for you. I don't know if it's about the word, but I may have to come get an RC car. Well, you're welcome to come up. We have we have a bunch. Uh, in case you don't know, he's talking about superstition hobbies. So, there you go, Mike. You got a plug. There you go. Um, yeah, come on up. I know it's in uh, Maricopa County, but ah, but that's close. It's, it's by close. Ted's too. It's by Ted's. Ted's shooting range. Well, they moved. We were in there. Still old close building. though. Yeah, they're have still you, close. Have you shot the new range? Oh yeah, it's nice. Yeah, the great people there too. They called the sheriff's on me, <laughs> on us for having running cars in the parking lot. Uh, yeah, so we kind of uh, gotcha. left on. They left when they moved. We weren't really upset. So. Well, they have a nice building. I haven't even stepped foot into it. It's good. It's nice. I, I, you know, we, my wife and I still go up to Scottsdale and shoot at SGC. So we have a good time up there. Good people there, too. Yeah, absolutely. You'll find that in the gun culture. Most 90% of them that can keep their finger off the trigger and uh, respect safety are, are good people. Yeah. And train, guys. If you're going to have a firearm, get out there. Ha learn how to use it. If you don't know how to use it, have somebody teach you how to properly use it. Mm-hmm. I couldn't agree more. Anything you want to add, Mark? No. Just uh, God bless America. Let's let's keep this country yeah. great. And uh, thank you for taking the time, and thank you for being a voice of freedom and for. We're gonna try. Yeah. I and appreciate God it. bless you, Mark. God, God bless, bless your you department. Too. Thank you. We'll do this again. All right. Sounds good.